Welcome to DOS Geek. There is an age-old flame war that's going on in the Linux world for some time that we are going to finally put to rest on this channel. Yes, this channel is powerful enough to put down the flame of decades of conversation and arguments. And, well, it will be interesting to see your comments on it. The question is, do you actually need antivirus software on Linux like you do on Windows? And in my opinion, the answer is complicated. It's no. It's also maybe. And sometimes it's also yes. You see, today we're going to dive into the chaos and figure out why the answer is confusing, why there's multiple answers here. And then we're going to set up the most capable open source virus scanner, Clam AV, to run automatically on your Linux machine just because we can. Regardless of how you feel about the question, you'll know how to do it by the end of this video. And, you know, the question of why can a typical Linux user get away with not running AV while a Windows user can't boils down to really a few core differences in how the operating systems are designed. On Linux, users and system files, they're strictly separated. This is how the system is designed by default from the moment you install it. Uh, malware, if it was to get on the system, would run with very limited user permissions and it can't modify your core operating system files without you using sudo. You have to give it explicit permissions to be able to access that. Now, on a Windows system, permissions are way more permissive. Additionally, let's face it, Windows is an easier and bigger target. If you're going to write malware, you're looking for the biggest and easiest target to spread it. While Linux is a massive honeypot for targets, I want to make sure that's very clear to people because a lot of times when you talk about the size of a target or people don't go after Linux because it's such a small thing, that's not true. From a hacker standpoint, Linux has and runs the most critical infrastructure in the world. When you look at governments, NASA, military, uh, all the businesses, the internet itself, I mean, if you can get malware on Linux, you have one heck of a honeypot, even bigger than the scale you could do for a Windows machine. But it's far more difficult to get technical users, who are generally the individuals utilizing Linux, to fall for phishing links or downloading random software on Linux, whereas in Windows, that's kind of part of using Windows is going to random websites to download software, hoping that once you double click it, that it's not malware. Uh, also, most Linux software comes from the distribution's official repositories like apt or Pac-Man. And this software has been vetted, reviewed and compiled by package maintainers. And this makes it more unlikely, not impossible for viruses to enter the supply chain because you've got an official place that you're going, generally in a store that you're clicking on in the distro, and that software there has been vetted and reviewed in almost all cases. Not every case, almost all. Now, that's not to say that there are not situations like in Arch where you're using the AUR, or even in the official repositories where there may not be something that gets through, but it's just a lot less likely. If you download a program on Linux, it generally also does not have permissions to run until you manually give it those permissions. Uh, for instance, going into the terminal and doing chmod plus x, whereas Windows download pro downloaded program is going to automatically run the moment you double click or open that file. Uh, so that's why the answer is usually no. But here's when it might be yes, and when you may want to check out something like Clam AV. If you're running something like a high-risk gateway, if you manage a file server, email gateways, shared network folders uh, that are accessed by Windows PCs, Clam AV can be a filter to help protect those Windows clients from files you're hosting. If, for instance, you're a researcher, pen tester, anyone who regularly downloads thousands of files from untrusted sources so that you can check them out, probably not a bad idea to have Clam AV running. Uh, if you run a website where users can upload files like forum posts or images, again, Clam AV prevents malicious code uh, potentially from being hosted on your server if it's set up correctly. And finally, 
you may want to run Clam AV because it's just a cool project to check out. It's pretty awesome that we have an open source project that does this and it's free and open source. And when you look at the alternatives, like if you're on Windows, you do have Windows Defender, which has been in the past years actually a very capable uh, antivirus, anti-malware tool. But as of recently, it doesn't seem to be keeping up with a lot of the new malware and things running. So you may be paying a subscription for something like ESET, uh, which is the one that if you were running Windows or have Windows machines, one of the ones, for instance, that I would recommend. Um, so that's why it's probably not necessary in Linux. Again, you know, when you look at the majority of the breaches and things that happen, they're caused from the people themselves these days. It's very rare that you have something like a zero day code, uh, even on the Windows side. It's very rare that a zero day uh, malicious code is found. And if it is, it's probably some government organization and they want to attack other governments. That doesn't mean once that's out there, it doesn't get reused to attack regular users, but that's kind of how that stuff goes. Usually most of the breaches are from the people themselves. They're not properly, there's not proper security awareness training. They're clicking links in their email box, um, or even they have security awareness training, but the malicious ways that these uh, emails and links are being propagated are just getting better and better. I saw one where they used an RN for the M in Microsoft to make it look like an email came from Microsoft. And in the email header, it took me a long time to figure out in this picture that it was an RN instead of an M. So the email looked like it actually came from Microsoft.com as an example. So, you know, these type of things make it very difficult. I have a personal rule, and I think you should adopt it as well, that no matter what comes to my email box, I never click the link. If it's my bank telling me, hey, we think there's fraud, I'm going and logging into Ryan'sBank.com manually, not clicking the link from inside that email, because that's how you get got in most cases. All right, let's stop talking about philosophy. Let's start configuring and setting up Clam AV. I'm gonna do a basic setup here. We're gonna do a scheduled daily deep scan that's gonna run at about 3 a.m. And these are the steps that you're gonna to need to follow. So now that we've settled the debate portion, I'm gonna actually show you how to install it. And it's super simple. All right, so now for the fun part, we're going to go ahead and install Clam AV. just do a very simple setup where we schedule, make sure that the uh, database gets updated for the different viruses and signatures, and that we have a regular scheduled runtime in here. So we're using the Clam AV step-by-step -step guide for Arch Linux on orionsguard.com. Uh, so check it out. I've spent a lot of time making sure uh, this works perfectly. So all you have to do is follow the steps here and cut and paste these commands. So the first thing, of course, you should do is update your system. Um, and by the way, the most security conscious thing you can do is to update your system. Uh, more important than kind of what we're doing here for fun for Clam AV, you need to make sure your system's always up to date. That's where all your patches, security holes gets fixed, all of that. So updating your system, the most important, regardless of what distro that you're on. After that, let's go ahead and install Clam AV, and we're going to do wget as well because we're going to use uh, wget in order to uh, pull down an example virus, basically a fake file that uh, acts nefarious enough that Clam AV will pick it up for our testing. We're going to enable this fresh clam.service. What this is going to do is, again, go out and look at, through system CTL, set up a service that's going to keep updating uh, to the latest versions. And you can also do your sudo fresh clam here. If you didn't have that, this service is going to lock it. Uh, so you could stop this service if you want to run that. Um, but I just put that command in there. You can run that first if you want, um, but generally once you install it, you're getting the latest version of it, so there's no need to. But just so you know it's there and how that works. Um, now we're going to do a uh, move a place for us to move our infected files. So we're going to make a directory in var log clam av, and we're going to call it infected there. 
And that's very simple. So that's our directory where we're going to move any of our files. So the next step is we want to create a scan service. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use Nano to edit. You could use Vim, whatever you want, in the Etsy system D, uh, clamscan.service. And we're going to cut and paste what you see on the screen here into this box. Um, so very, very simple to do. You don't have to know what every command's doing, but you can kind of look through it and get a general idea uh, that this is a pretty uh, kind of simple thing here. You do need sudo in this case, which I didn't, and that's why you had the red um, error at the bottom. So if you can't save, uh, and if you've ever used nano before, you're just gonna hit control X. Um, it will ask you if you wanna save if that file didn't exist. You hit yes, enter and you're good to go. So uh, there we go. We've got our quarantine file. We've got our uh, scanner set up. And let's now get our timer set. So we're going to create another file here in Etsy system D. It's going to be our timer. And we're going to cut and paste. It's going to run daily. And it's going to run at 3 a.m. So this is when it's going to run its scan. And this is kind of a time that's up to you when you're using your system. Uh, when you're not using your system, that's when you want it to run. 3 a.m., I am definitely in bed, so I don't have to worry about anything there. Same thing, you're just going to cut and paste. Uh, I can just show you real quick. You know, you just grab uh, over here, copy, right-click, paste it in, and then Control-X. It's going to ask if you want to save. Yes. Hit enter, and I have this extremely zoomed in so you can read what's happening, but uh, yours will look a lot more cleaner than that. We'll go ahead and clear the terminal here uh, so we have a little bit of cleaner look. And now we're gonna enable this automated service. So we're gonna do system CTL enable our timer, and then we're going to go ahead and reload the system scheduler there and we should be good from that aspect. Now, we can check and make sure that we have everything set up properly by running this command here, and it will tell us that it's going to be running in two hours and 15 minutes. Um, so it's gonna run on Sunday in about two hours and 15 minutes, and so we've got that running good, and we can get uh, an additional uh, status here as well to make sure that everything's enabled, active and waiting. Our clam scan.service is there to go. And we have everything installed. It's very, very simple to get set up, especially when you've got all of the scripts and stuff that I've set up here kind of for you. If you want to do a test file, I've got this wget here where you're pulling down one of these not actually nefarious, but a test file that you can use that clam AV will pick up. It's going to download that and then you can start manually kick off your scanning service if you want. And that's going to start running a scan right now. Now, what we can do here, and I'll make this bigger for you, is we can see if it actually starts grabbing any of those infected files by utilizing this command here. And this is gonna look in our log and see if there's anything nefarious going on. And you can see I've let this run and it's captured all the clam AV test files and the ICAR test files and it's grabbed some other stuff as well. And so it may be that you need to, clearly I do, create an exclusion file for some of these that, uh, for instance, I believe some of these come from Visual Studio, some things that probably shouldn't be grabbing, but it thinks are nefarious, which is fine. You want it to be a little more aggressive than, uh, you know, the opposite of that. Uh, so we can create our, or we can go edit our exclusion file in here and we can start adding some of those things in. You can see I have some examples here for you as well. And we can make sure that uh, those files are left alone because we know they're, they're good. They're ones we wrote. The code I write is so bad the system thinks it's a virus. Think about that for a second. All right, well, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that answers some of your questions with Clam AV. Very cool tool, amazing that we get this open source free tool uh, when you've got other services you have to pay for. Uh, I love Clam AV. Uh, not super useful probably for most people's use cases, but those who do need it, 
It's an incredible tool. You've also, of course, got other amazing tools out there like Sandfly and stuff to check out. Uh, go to destinationlinux.net slash Sandfly and check out that for real-time monitoring of all your network, especially for your home labs and things, or you can even launch it from DigitalOcean. That's it. That's my video. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. 